Hey guys, welcome to the channel again. You know, it's Joe Jaguar, your best buddy. Now, what am I doing today? Now, last video, or maybe it was the one before, I showed you guys this guy, and I promised I was gonna do these two. Why? I heard this on the forums. I'm not gonna mention which one, but it doesn't matter. It was somebody asked, why would somebody pay four or $5,000 for a apple chromatic refractor when you can get a 10 inch can't remember if they said dobsonian or reflecting telescope that will show you 10 times uh, the resolution of something like that so here we go just because you asked now this is both of these are meat so meat 6000 series 130 millimeter triplet refractor so it's a 5.1 inch. This is a 10 inch F4 Schmidt Newtonian. I've showed it to you guys unboxing and one time. So now we're gonna see why would somebody get something like this instead of something like that. It doesn't matter if that's, uh, I mean, this is a four, the Dobsonian ones are 4.8, 4.7. So it's less than one focal ratio different, but Dobsonian really just means it's, uh, this is on the EQ, the Dobsonian just means the base. It doesn't matter, it's still a reflecting telescope. So we're gonna see what does better on the planets. Now, I had a, a gathering here, and I showed people who have never seen Jupiter and Saturn and the moon through this guy, and they were blown away, okay? And what I saw on this guy last week, I can clearly see a huge difference from the last time I used this one on Jupiter and Saturn, but I'm not gonna take it on on that because I used them on different nights and I didn't compare the powers to be pretty much exactly. This time I will. I am going to use them side by side because that's how you compare them. I can't go by what I saw a week ago and three weeks ago. It doesn't work like that. The night could have been totally different. The seeing, the clarity could be off and uh, I, the powers could have been mismatched. This time we're gonna do it side by side and I'm gonna match the powers. I'm gonna let them cool down. I'm gonna check collimation again. Okay guys, I do have a little problem right now. So I got two EQ6s and they're the older model and just with the drives in it. So the problem is one hand control, I don't know if, I, if you guys heard me say in a couple videos, are starting to uh, like the buttons wasn't actually activating, it was actually slewing without me even pushing the buttons. And um, now it's not powering up. I thought, oh, there it goes. So it just powered up. Okay, I'm lucky this time. But I think I'm going to have to start looking for a, uh, a third remote control, just in case this one is going to start to screw up. Anyway, okay, let's get going. I'm just going to uh, set up and I'll be back. Inside. Okay, this time I have an extension. Um, what, was, what was silly, uh, I don't know if you guys remember, the last video I did with the Schmidt Newtonian, um, I said, you know, I used a barrel, so hopefully uh, you guys remember, because I didn't have a, um, an extension tube. However, what's funny, What's funny is I did have an extension too and I didn't even realize it. So when I bought one, I, now I have two. Okay guys, so I put it on low power and now I got a eight millimeter radian. Now I just wanted to tell you that I did check my collimation in and out and I focused it and it is a perfect donor. Just in case anybody wants to know. So let's take the power, four radian, which gives us 254 power. So that should be plenty to view the Jupiter in good detail. Oh yeah, it's nice and big. So again, I did, yeah, the circle seems to be a nice donut. However, okay, 254 power. I can see the moons. Three on one side, one on the right side. I can see banding. But and it's just not crystal clear to me. It's not sharp. Okay. 
let's try Saturn out. And this is what I was saying before, that yes, I collect more light, but it's not gonna be sharper on the planets. Now I think where it's gonna excel is the deep sky stuff is gonna collect. But you know, let's, let's, let's go on Saturn and see. Low, medium, and high power. With the eight millimeter radian, because Saturn is a much higher contrast item, I actually like it much better. Okay, let's bump it up again to a four millimeter radian, giving us uh, 254 power, which is a decent power for the planets. And again, the donut looks beautiful inside and out. And at 254 power, okay, Saturn looks pretty good. Pretty sure you can see two of the moons, unless it's just the stars in the field of view. Okay, that looks good to me. Let's try this with the refractor. Okay, we're going to go on Jupiter. Okay, low power view. Looks good. Let's go to the same thing. A H radian. Okay, guys, it's really no competition. In both radiant, like both eight millimeter radian on each one, it's hands down the the Mead triplet refractor is just razor sharp against the like something like a ten inch uh, reflecting telescope. I mean, I did it for you guys who asked about why would somebody get. An expensive refractor. Okay, we're at the four radian, which uh, is 227 on this guy, and it's 254 on that guy. So unfortunately, that's as close as I can get. Um, okay, on Jupiter, 227. There, I was 254, so it was even a little bit bigger. It collected more light. In the medium power, I can see more detail. I can again see more detail, like at this power, it is a bit sharper, but I, you know, and I can see more finer lines. That one probably gave it a bit uh, brighter image, but this one is a clearer image. And like for instance, the great red spot, I can see it, where that one, it was just too fuzzy to see. Okay, let's move to Saturn, where it's a high contrast item, and I'm positive, actually, you know what, I forgot something. Now that's a nice image. Saturn is just easier to push the power. Oh yeah, okay, wow. Okay, let me put the four radiant. 227 power. The image I saw last week, as I said, when I was showing people, the Cassini get division was like boom, it was like standing out right in my face. Now, I didn't record what power I was at, so unfortunately, I'm just showing a few friends that was over. I see it now when I steady it for a bit. Yeah, so. I can see some banding on, on Saturn there. Cassini division is there. I'm sure I could even push it a, a little bit more power on the refractor. Let's go to a three radian, which becomes like a 303 power. Okay, let me study it for a second. I, I guess today the scene is not as clear. I just, I know when I showed it to my friends and when I was looking at it, it's like, wow, my my, my mouth dropped of how much detail I saw on Saturn and it's like there's no way it's gonna it's gonna kill that guy but again see I guess this is why some days of exceptional seeing the the clarity would just be amazing and um, some days are not as good as good you know I guess today I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to be as honest as I can I guess I'll talk to you guys inside. 
and uh, show you guys what I what I see. Hey guys, so the conclusion to yesterday, um, I actually wanted to do a second video, show you guys something, but uh, I'll do it after. I forgot one thing and a very important thing. Um, I didn't even have dinner at all. So, but when I was up out there and I was thinking, I wanna show these guys a second video, of course it would have been on a different date. Uh, I was like, I was starting to starve. So just to show you guys, you can't do observing if you don't eat properly. Um, so by the time I pack up two scopes, the accessories, the eyepieces, the mounts, the counterweights, and then start dinner and eat, I was pretty hungry. So anyway, the conclusion is, <clears throat> Okay, my collimation, I showed you guys, I'm not sure if I'm gonna, my, this video is way too long, over 32 minutes without this, vi this part, portion of it. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna show that, but I collimated, it's like 100% collimated. Now, the last time I viewed with the 10 inch here, by itself when I showed you that video, and then when I, uh, last week when I had guests over and I showed them through the, I don't know where it is, the five inch is somewhere over there, uh, triplet mead refractor that refractor gave amazing quality now com but you can never go by that you have to do them side by side because one day could have been better than the other anyway so the conclusion here with the 10 inch being perfectly collimated cooled um, it was pretty decent now it wasn't as far as uh, as uh, big of a gap as I was thinking it would be because I did them both on different nights. Now that I compare them side by side, the refractor triplet was sharper than this guy on the planets. I don't doubt what that person said. Why would somebody buy that one instead of something like this? Um, they're correct if you want to see deep sky stuff in dark uh, places. Uh, I don't know if, we, if you're in a light polluted um, nine or eight even a seven zone it's really going to help that much but if you take this to a dark site a 10 inch you're going to see lots of things now on planets though that's what i did this video the refractor is just sharper by a fair amount i wouldn't say a huge amount but it's just more crystal clear sharp so i would say if you want something just for deep sky viewing then sure, get yourself a 10 inch uh, reflector, regardless if it's on an EQ or a daub mount. Now, if you want better planetary view views, then you should have a refractor in your arsenal. Okay, a four, five inch, five and a half, as you see, six inch is very big. If you want to go that way, that's fine. However, everybody should have a good refractor. So, but in this video is what is better on the planets, sun, moon, planets, maybe the brighter um, uh, stuff out there, double stars, some brighter clusters. The uh, the the five point one inch refractor is much better. You don't have to worry about collimation, uh, even though I guess once you master it, it's not too big of a deal. But still, um, I would prefer a refractor. It's just razor sharp. I can see more detail. I could see the Cassini division easier. I could see the great red spot easier. I can see the fine um, uh, equatorial bands on Saturn and Jupiter much easier. Yes, it's bigger, collects more light, but if it's not as crystal clear and the contrast doesn't separate all the different zones, you know, it's okay. Maybe for a new person, you wanna see overall detail. Okay, maybe, maybe, but if you could afford it, you should go for the refractor. I say that's the clear winner today. It was at least 20, 25% more sharper detail. I'm not talking about how much light it collected, I'm talking about the sharpness and contrast and detail was about 20, 25% more detail in the triplet refractor compared to the 10 inch uh, F4 Schmidt Newtonian. Remember, it, the corrector plate does make it the coma and it corrects for some of those aberrations, a minimum one F factor. So which means even though it's an F4, most reflecting telescopes are just plain reflecting type, uh, which means they'll have lots of coma. With the corrector plate, it's like if it was made F5 or F5.5, around there. So again, it's, it's no slouch either. But again, on planets, a refractor will always win. I know some of you guys that are not as experienced might think 
yeah, you're gonna see more detail or resolution, maybe, but it's gonna be more fuzzier. So then what's the point? More crystal clear and seeing all the finer detail is what you want on the planets. When you look at a 12 magnitude, let's say galaxy or a globular cluster or something like that, it's just a little fuzzy cotton ball in the eyepiece. You really can't see much detail, you know, but the planets, are the brightest things in the sky, the sun, moon, and planets and things. That's where you want to really push it. Two, three, a hundred power and see the detail because they're the closest things to us and the best things to us. So that's my opinion. There you go. I think in this case on planetary uh, views, solar system views, the that's why people like me and others will have an expensive uh, acromat, sorry, an apple chromatic over something much bigger. Again, this guy would do, will do better on the dim deep sky stuff. Anyway, Joe Jaguar, like, comment, and subscribe.